Next, we're going to create a midge pupa, which from a fish's standpoint is likely the most available stage of the midge. Now here in the Northwest, fishing the midge pupa is simply called coronament fishing, a very popular form of stillwater fly fishing. Now this pattern is designed to sink and hang suspended with very little motion, either near the bottom or sometimes the surface of the lake where most of the feeding will occur. The pattern I use was derived from the coronamids tied by my buddy Herman Fisher in Kamloops, BC. They've proven to be very effective. Let's take a look at the materials we're going to use, okay? I'm going to be tying on a size 14 nymph hook, these little beauties right here. The body will be composed of some synthetic stretchable plastic floss. The thorax, we're going to use a little bit of peacock curl, just a couple strands here. And we're going to rib this with some silver wire that's about six thousandths diameter. The plumose gills that these chronomids have, we'll use some white polypropylene yarn. And then the covert or wing case, we're going to use a little bit of the synthetic raffia. Okay, let's slide this out of the way for a moment. I'm going to place one of these hooks in the jaws here, about like so. Now, one of the uh, problems uh, with the uh, pointy jaws like this is it's a little bit more challenging to get the hook centered. We have this device that comes with the fine point conversion, and that tells us right where the center of that is going to be. You see, we got pretty lucky. It's, it's pretty close to being there. That way, when you spin the vise, you'll find that the shank of the hook, this part right here, is perfectly centered. Okay? We'll start out by attaching our working thread up here at the head end. And then I'm going to use some of this silver wire. It's about six thousandths in diameter. Now we're going to roll on a little bit of wire here. Let me get that end kicked over. There we go. And by putting some extra wire up here at the head end of it, up in this area, we add a little bit of weight to the thing. Okay? So you're going to do that, and then we'll take the wire and just work our way back, putting this on edge to edge. You see how nice and smoothly that goes on? So you get all the way back here to the point of the hook, and at that point we'll just sort of cut off a piece about four or five inches long that we're going to use as a rib. Store that in our material holder. That's this little spring right up here. Okay. Next, I'm going to use a piece of the synthetic plastic floss. And we'll tie it in up here at the head end. And again, uh, rotating the vise start up here where the thorax is going to be. That's all going to get covered up. Now as you work your way back, increase the amount of stretch or tension we're putting on that stretchable floss. All the way back like this, down, around the curve of the hook. See how you can weave that in and out? The fine point jaws make access a lot easier when you want to tie around the bend of the hook. Okay, now at this point Again, pulling hard, reverse yourself, work your way forward, okay, avoid the point of the hook, and as you get further forward, back off on the pressure so there's not very much stretch on there. Now see how that develops a tapered body? Works really neat. Okay. At this point, bring your bobbin in and just come, oops, come right in like that. Tie off your floss it short. Okay, that back up out of the way. And then we'll take our ribbing material, this wire, and counterwind. In other words, go opposite direction. Now as you work your way forward, increase the distance between each turn. And that'll uh, uh, place the, uh, the segments, as it were, uh, in a little more natural position where they are wider apart towards the head end of the fly. Okay, next, tie in a piece of this synthetic raffia, or Swiss straw is often called, and you want to just tie that right on the top of the hook like that. There we go. 
and you can trim that off a bit. And let me see, I can get back just about that far. Now, what I like to do here is take a couple pieces of a hurl, strip those off of there, and you want to use this part, the tips of the hurl. That's the good part. So we'll tie that in by the tips, like this, okay? And you get back here to the tie-in point, you secure it with a half hitch, pull the ends off. It's so tender you don't even use scissors. Okay, but spin that together with your working thread, and that'll make a chenille out of it. Okay, and now at this point we'll take and very carefully rotate that into position about like so. Lock it in place. Come back and tie it off. Now, one of the prominent features that these coronaments have are these white plumose gills, they're called. And they come right out of the top of the head. Now, to simulate that, we're going to use a little bit of poly yarn. Just tie that on about like this. A couple nice, good, hard wraps. And secure it with a half hitch. Trim off the tag end. And then we pull our covert, or wing case, over the top like this. Hold that down there. Tie it down like so. Slide in a half hitch. Pull this back. Trim it off. Lift up those gills. And get underneath them like this. And then you can come back and just whip finish right underneath those gills. That'll throw them up just perfect. Okay. Nice and tight. Cut that off. Now you want to trim these gills, as the Canadians say, to about three millimeters, or we say about a quarter or eighth of an inch, rather. About like this. And that's what those little beauties really look like. And I'll tell you, they do fish well. So you can see how that looks. Isn't that neat?